That was ridiculous. His memoir, Carrying the Fire, remains the standard by which all books authored by astronauts are judged. Right stuff meets right brain. He is the poet laureate of the Apollo astronauts, and yet one of his regrets from that era involves a lack of poetry at a historic moment. In December 1968, he was the astronaut in charge of radio communication with the crew of Apollo 8, the first voyage to orbit the moon. It was his job to give mission commander Frank Borman permission to fire the rocket that would give them enough velocity to escape the gravitational pull of Earth. In NASA parlance, it was called Translunar Injection, or TLI. It was a historic first. So I thought uh, when this moment comes in history, this is it. The Pope will certainly send a message, the President will come, Sinatra will sing, there'll be some acknowledgement of it. Now in the meantime, of course, it's up to Frank and me, and we're, we're both right up there, we're going to handle this thing properly. So I went first, I said, All right, you are go for TLI, over. And Frank rose to the occasion, he said, Roger, understand, we're go for TLI. That was it, that was it, that was the whole thing. That was ridiculous. I mean, what, what do we have all this for? If you had to do that one over, what would you say? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I have to think that one over. A few weeks later, I interviewed him again at the World Science Festival in New York City. He was ready. Here's your moment for a do-over. What would you say if you could do it again? Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I would ab abide by the NASA rules, which you can't, you, you can't say more than I think eight words in a row, and preferably they'll all be monosyllabic, but <laughs> under those conditions, I would say, Apollo 8, uh, the moon is yours, go! <laughs> <laughs> 50 years ago, the moon became ours, thanks to Apollo 11. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins were the trio at the tip of a rocket that flew into history thanks to the concerted effort of more than 300,000 people and the consistent support of American taxpayers. When it was done, inhabitants in all corners of our fragile planet saw it as a triumph for not just one country, but for humanity as a whole. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Miles O'Brien.